Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. You've probably already seen it in the news, but there was a supply chain attack on 3CX desktop app. Um, this is a voice over IP software, so you can call people with that. Uh, lots of companies use this software and now there has been a software update with malicious code inside. Um, today we're gonna analyze this with Binary Ninja. Let's look into it. So we first got to know about 3CX via the um, bleeping computer article. And this is not so uncommon. So if you have, um, not not everything occurs first time at, at the client software. If you work as a map analyst, um, checking articles is uh, one thing you will have to do to um, add some new signatures for something that the others found. So, and one of the reasons you write articles is, uh, or maybe analysis articles to also help other analysts um, analyzing this. So Bleeping Computer, they commonly get their information, compile their information from more in-depth technical articles. So one of the things I recommend you do is always find the actual analysis as source of that because they usually contain more information. So in Bleeping Computer, you will see um, references in here. Um, so we can read the article, find uh, references here to SOFOS analysis. And um, this is actually just web archive GitHub repository, Sentinel-1. So we have a few articles that you would then read in depth to find out some more information about the matter you're gonna analyze. And that's completely legitimate, of course, to do that. Uh, we already know from this article that FFmpeg is the um, malicious DLL of this application. We already know that this is gonna download some icon files and um, here is some more information. Um, interesting. And they mention here some kind of info stealer. That is the last stage. Is it even on virus total? Let's check this. And it's not, so that's too bad. <laughs> All right. Okay, but how do we start? Well, the first thing that we have is the MSI file. Um, and if you, like this is the, the let's say original file that gets downloaded from the CCX update and that you unpack just with 7-zip. So let's do that. And here you have the files. We know that we need this one, the D3 decompiler, and we know we need the um, FM, FFM pack. So let's get them. And rename them a little. If you follow my channel, you will know that I always advocate to check the strings. Now, there's one issue with this. Uh, let's see. This is going what feels like forever. So the problem with legitimate applications that have been trojanized, so where someone patched malicious code into them is legitimate applications are usually huge. So you see it's quite hard to find the actual location of the malicious code this way. And that makes it difficult indeed. Um, now there are several ways you can deal with when you have to find the malicious code of a Trojanized application. The first one is you get a clean, or in this case, you don't have a clean version of that one, um, a previous version, 
and use a tool that does some binary diffing, then you can find the changed functions and specifically look into those. But of course, you should also always just check the entry point of the file. So for DLL, this is like DLL main, and then you can also see if there are some added exports or something like that. That would be very obvious, of course, but um, that's where I would start. Also, they mentioned that those files are signed. That um, we can, let's check that as well. So this one is signed by Microsoft um, and I think the FFmpeg is used, but yeah, then, yeah, right. So this is a signed file. Um, if that's a malicious one, there are two options how a malicious file can be signed uh, and have a valid um, certificate. Um, they can steal the certificate somehow, or they can manipulate the um, certificate section to contain some data without destroying the actual file. In the manipulation case, running the file will not execute any malicious code still, but uh, you could, you know, hide some data in that. Um, so let's check. All right, and we should wait now for the analysis to finish. Otherwise, you are going to start looking into stuff that um, you will find out is being analyzed later. So how could we actually start? Well, with Binja, I would first start with the um, triage summary because here you find the imports and exports. And you can um, check those uh, specifically if you find, let's say, screenshots of the malicious code um, in some analysis articles, check what APIs are being called from that screenshot, and then you can use the imports here to find the API. Let's say you found virtual protector, click on that, and then find the reference to that. Well, and there it's being called. Um, Then, of course, something something you should do is try the entry point. Like This is a DLL, so the entry point will start um, in the... Um, let's find the DLL main, actually. So this one will start where the DLL dispatch, DLL main dispatch function is called. We go into that, and between the DLM main CRT dispatch calls, the two ones, uh, there is the DLL main. So this is the function we are looking for. We check that. We see there's not much inside. It's just checking for ARC2 and we go into that one. And here is the actual malware code. How do I know that? Because this is loading this D3 decompiler and we already um, know from the articles that this one is where the malicious code is extracted. So let's call this. Right. And now we are gonna check what this is actually doing. One of the things I'm always doing is like getting some sort of overview, checking the end of that, what's happening here down below. Um, these labels, they point to some, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of, uh, okay get last error heap free. So this is just some free um, function. So this is something like um, free in exit. And let's 
get to this one. So this is an event handler. AB monitor refresh event checks if that was successful and then it checks if this event already exists. So this is the last error and this error should not be that it already exists. Um, we have another function here that's not known. Now from viewing this, this looks like some library stuff that uh, I don't, I think that was mem said. All right. And get modify name. We have a, ah, yes, all right. This is a buffer that receives a Unicode module file name. Um, like this is uh, double the size of that one. This is the buffer uh, we are having here in the module. Actually, it's the file path of the module. Um, like we get the whole path, including the folders, and that is being saved into this buffer. Oh, it took a while for it to register that. And that is the size and here it's um, in characters. And is it in characters and in teachers? Yes, and that is the size in bytes and it's filling that with zeros. So here it uh, searches for the beginning of it character so we have the backslash so this is um, getting a pointer to the last occurrence of this character and that means here we have um, the start like, like slash slash ffmpeg dot dll this is what's inside this one here rename our name bit slash and here we have the same but it's a module file name without the slash so just the module file name this is just some error checking So this here replaces the module file name with a D3D compiler underscore 47 DLL. Um, that way it basically it grabs, the, the whole purpose of that is it grabs the folder it is currently located in and then checks inside that folder for the D3D decompiler uh, DLL. So this is what is being done here. Can I display this as a character? Oh, it's just in here. Uh, okay, it's a, just some um, way to do that. If the pseudo code doesn't make sense, check the disassembly. That's where you find um, the, the exact instructions that might be a bit more useful to you. So it's creating a, uh, getting a file handle. So create file just gets a file handle. So we have here the uh, here a uh, file handle um, because that's the file that's being used. And uh, why do I have to scroll sideways? That's a bit inconvenient. Inconvenient. Um, So it reads the file and
keep a lock. So here we have some buffer where it reads the file inside that. Uh, and that is a sequence you should remember because this is uh, looking for MZ. So this is reading the um, DLL, the Wait, why is it data like that now? Ah, uh, let's change the type. Sorry. Uh, that's better. We have another weird thing here. Let's get back. It now it looks a little bit better. Um, so we allocate a buffer with this file size. We read that. So this buffer actually contains our DLL. Uh, um, and since it starts at MZ, what we can do at this point is put um, the DOS header as a type for that because um, that's yeah where, where it starts. Um, the types you find under view types, types that are already there. So let's check DOS header, DOS header, we copy this and make this a DOS header. And now we see the reference is here emagic, which is correct, and here elf new. So let's look for the um, peak of specification. And you will find that at 03c, which is what you saw before, there is the elf new value, which points to the PE. Zero, 00 signature. If you haven't already watched my video about how PE files are structures, structured that will help you with that. Um, so right after PE00, zero, zero, there's the start of the headers, um, start of the cough header more specifically. And um, so that's where we are at at this point. This However, this doesn't make so much sense because generally the other values of the DOS head are not of interest for malware. So let's look into this as a disassembled version. So this is EOF and new, and that means at this point we are getting the offset to PE00. So um, this is PE0. Zero. At this this um, adds eighteen. Let's change this actually. To decimal. So that means it's PE zero zero plus twenty. So like PE zero zero has four bytes plus twenty means we are then at the optional header, and that is something you can. Um, verify here uh, the cough header stops at 20 so like the last this the last offset value is the last field is at 18 and that has a size of 2 so after that there's the optional header which is where we are at at this point and then we are there, let's look into it on the no, high-level view and we can change this to the optional header and we can also change the type here to the optional header, see if that helps us a little bit. Um,
Now, this is PE64 um, option header. There are different headers depending on um, if it's a 64 or a 32 PE. What's the difference between those? When you check here, um, you already see there are different offsets uh, depending on uh, PE32 plus is, um, 64 bit. There are different offsets of that. The reason is right. Well, where is it? Here. <laughs> now I found it. The reason is this field, the base of data field, which is only present in 32 bit. Um, so. 32 bit PEs and not in the 64 bit PE. So the 64 bit PE header is actually smaller. Now remember, we are using the, um, we are reading this file right here. I'm not sure if I checked the bitness. I guess I didn't. So that's the one. And we see this is a 64 bit one, so that should be all right to use this. So it um, helps a little bit with this here. This is calculate uh, checking if it's the 64 or 32 bit PE. Um, I'm not sure why they check that because it seems like when they apply this patch here that they know what they were loading, but okay. Maybe it's copied from somewhere and then would explain this. Display this as enum, set this as a type. So here we see it's checking. And if it's not 32 bit, um, then this value here will be one. And then it means we have some alignment value here. So this means um, some alignment value and due to that alignment value, this is now, um, not, not correct here. So actually let's, let's check the disassembly again. Um, what we are dealing with is this is the optional header. This is the start of PE zero zero. Then we add the, um, optional header and then we add 84 or since we need that as a decimal that's 132 and right below there's something similar and 128 and 132 so let's check those here <laughs> So 128 is the uh, start of the certificate table. That's unusual. Generally malware would not, I, that's not a value I would remember. Let's put it that way. I had to look this up here. Whereas something like getting the optional header offset, that one I would see. Um, so, and you see the field um, is composed um, of eight bits and uh, the first four the first four are the address and the other four are the size. This, this one, that's actually the address. And it's not the resource table. We see the resources are here, so we are off. Um, by eight bytes. Um, 16 bytes, not eight bytes, which is due to this alignment here.
So it determines where the certificate starts, certificate address plus three. So this is some kind of index, current offset that is being checked against the size and this is like moved. Um, and so we are searching at this offset, um, certificate address start plus offset, and then it checks. That's why it's um, plus three because it like it's checks from minus three. <laughs> Um, and then it searches for this, these values. Let's look into the disassembly FE feed, feed phase. Um, it's recommended that if you find, if you find such values, just Google them. Sometimes you find stuff. Or you can, that's Google them like that maybe. And on Twitter, DCM test. I, uh, so it seems to be used quite often in um, with crypt. So this is not really helping us. But yeah, it looks like this is checking for the sequence here. Um, Search search feed phase in the um, certificate, and it's doing that until it finds the end of the certificate. So when it's found, it will do what's happening here minus current offset. So this is the start of the certificate again. Not exactly, it's right after feed phase. Because that's why. So current offset is right after the feed phase thingy, but it's plus eight. So what's happening here? It's allocating some space for buffer. That's the size of the buffer. It takes this size from uh, set size minus eight. Um, so at the end of the certificate, there is the size of um, the whole thing. No, set size minus current offset. That's the buffer length, um, the, the rest of the data. So after feed phase, there's some data and um, the data goes until the end of the certificate. So this is the mm, buffer length um, that is being calculated here. And um, here we copy the data inside that.
Um, these are two loops that two loops that uh, go onto um, 100 hex, which is I think the same as um, 256. This is that's something you should remember as being RC4. Um, if you search for RC4 on Wikipedia, you should please get the English one. Thanks. So yes, this is what you see here. So these are the, the two loops. It's the KSA um, key scheduling algorithm. And what we want or that we are interested in would be the key. So apparently, um, this looks like it because this is like this key and then index. So it's kind of like um, getting a value from this, um, using this as an array here. And so this is RC4 for the data in the certificate. Um, and after that, you see RC4 stuff. Now after that, it calls virtual protect on that address. Which is just the start of the buffer. So there is some code right starting right at the beginning of that. It calls virtual protect with um, page execute read write. Um, so at some point it should run this here. That is the execution of the function. Um, so this is probably some shell code since like it decrypts this buffer and right at the start of the buffer, this is executed. Let's go into that, um, verify this. So we know this is getting the values from D3D compiler. We also know it's looking for feed phase, but I, I still would like to check the certificate location. So you find that in the data directory and there is the certificate table. That's where it starts um, at offset um, 49E000. Um, So here's the start of the certificate data. And we should find feed phase at this point. And here it is at feed phase twice. That is interesting. And that's then the data here, right after feed phase. We do select block, just the 10 zeros, bam. And that is um, encrypt cord feed phase. Looks all right. And this is perfect for CyberChef. So we know it's using RC4. 
we also know the buffer it is using from the buffer the key. And this looks already all right, and especially this one. <laughs> um, if you see nulls, then it's probably all right for code because uh, code often contains like zero values. Um, so does an a PE file. So this looks all right. Uh, let's um, save this. So that's it for unpacking the first stage. We are going to look at the next stage in the next video. And I hope to see you soon. Let me know if you like this kind of um, analysis. So see ya.